Hi, everybody. We're back. This is Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org. I'm here with at Stu, Stu Miniman, who is my co-host today. We're live at Edge. This is the Cube. Eva Helen is here, and uh, she is, I believe, the CTO of Sambolic, the most interesting company that you've never heard of. Am I right? Are you the CTO? No, I'm no. not really the no. CTO. I'm no. fairly technical. No, I am okay. one of the co-founders and definitely the president. I know um, you're. Oh, you're president. I knew you were an alpha geek. <laughs> so, I am. Okay, and you've written code. <laughs> so. Okay, so you're president, uh, founder, co-founder. Yeah, and, and uh, uh, hand a lot of the sales uh, side of what we're trying to do at Symbolic. Oh, so you're dangerous with all that technical knowledge out in front of customers. So anyway, welcome to the Cube. Thank Thanks you for, so much for making some time to come by. So. Um, Edge, you're here. You got some, a shout out yesterday from Ambush Goyal. That must have been uh, been, been pleasing. You shouted back. Right? I did shout back. He kind of uh, asked for that, so I did. Yeah, that's good. Um, so what are you doing here at Edge, and uh, what are you guys doing with IBM? Well, first of all, we're extremely happy to be at here because our relationship with IBM is fairly new. Uh, we have a lot of joint customers, but those have kind of passed under the radar until now. Now we're trying to um, basically look at who is actually using IBM hardware to see, you know, how are they using the Melio software together with these IBM deployments. But the primary reason I came here was because we're launching a SQL Server appliance with System X this week. And um, it's been in the work, works for a long time, uh, and it's a very exciting solution, and we're going to bring it to market through partners. Yeah, so tell me more about the, uh, you announced that when, today or yesterday? It was, uh, System X did a whole bunch of announcements yesterday, and we were one of those. So what we're seeing is, you know, I'm meeting with a lot of people from the channel that are actually selling System X, and one of the things that they're looking for is complete solutions that can accelerate the System X sales. So what we've done is we've taken uh, storage servers, and maybe I should just tell you a little bit about what Symbolic does before yeah, I let's start. <laughs> let's start there. I mean, I say I know the company a little bit, so you, I, I, we said off camera, you are the software defined in software defined storage. So let's, let's back up. So Symbolic, you guys have been around for quite some time. You've built out an amazing, robust storage stack. You know, one of the best in the industry. So, so tell us about the, the company. Yeah, so, so we started the company 13 years ago. So we've been around for a long time and we came from distributed computing, working in the telco space initially. Um, and we've basically continued to develop the software suite uh, continuously as we started and just build on top of what we started from the very beginning. So it's a complete data management suite that we have uh, that consists of three layers, volume management, cluster file system and application clustering. Um, and as software defined storage has now all of a sudden become the hippest of all hype words, um, it aligns really, really nicely with what we do. So we've not uh, reinvented anything, we've just continued to build on what we had from the very beginning. Um, and because we're software only, there's no appliance, there's no um, specific server that comes with the software, we just install on all the servers in a cluster and give those shared access to the storage to provide high availability and scale out for applications. So in the SQL Server appliance, which we're launching this week with IBM, we're basically taking storage servers, the hard drives out of those, using the volume manager to stripe across, sharing it out with the file system, and providing the application clustering for SQL Server from the top. So we cover um, all the three layers in that stack, and it's software-defined storage because there is no external storage device. Okay, so so it's software only, but but it's also software. What makes it software-defined? So you you abstract the underlying hardware. Yeah. Right, uh, and and then you allow uh, a granular access to to services. Yeah. That are in your stack. Yes. Through an open API. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, and <laughs> and, uh, and then you are sort of device agnostic, right? I mean, you got... We're completely device agnostic, and, and hence the reason we haven't uh, looked so carefully at you know all the types of hardware that our customers are using, because it's an array of everything. But we are storage agnostic and, and brand agnostic. We're protocol agnostic, server and hypervisor agnostic, and now also storage media agnostic. And so that's why it's very exciting to be part of all these flash sessions that are going on uh, during these days because what we can do is we can mix and match, we can combine spinning disk and flash in the same environments, 
And with a component in the file system, we can intelligently place the data a little bit more advanced than, than some of the other tiering tools that are out there. Yeah, so you've got a quality, a quality of service component that is, um, that is more advanced, it's somewhat unique in that regard, but because I've seen the demo and you get, you got a Viridin card, you got a Fusion card, you got spinning disk, you got a Mellanox, you know, switch and everything's going in with InfiniBand or, or 10 gig E, uh, and you virtualize that entire infrastructure and then your file system is smart enough to, to place data in, in the right place. Yeah, and I think a lot of the hardware vendors and a lot of the technology that IBM has, um, it has come, you know, it has come a very long way. I think um, all the stuff that they're doing with TMS is extremely exciting and they've really made a huge leap forward. Um, but there's still some things that we can add, some value that we can add like to what? that. Like talk, talk about that a little bit. Um, well, I, specifically in, um, even if you're doing uh, tiering, even if you are talking about, you know, the economics of the data, and how are you placing it and so on. There's still multiple copies, there's still uh, pools of storage and, and um, data that needs to be managed individually, data that needs to be moved around. The whole idea with our product suite is to create one pool of the storage that can be accessed from multiple places. So you're providing the high, av high availability from the file system layer. All of a sudden you have a much more uh, stretchable backend and that can be made highly available on premise in one location, but you can also stretch that across sites. So in some cases what we've done with, uh, with IBM is we'll have multiple uh, locations, say, let's say two locations with XIV storage from IBM in both locations and then we use our RAID, the mirroring in our uh, file system technology to stripe across those two sites to get high availability across sites as well. So there's all of a sudden uh, a much more flexible backend and we're creating um, a more agile infrastructure based on the components, hardware components that IBM and, and other vendors are So offering. you've got a full volume management, data management, storage management stack yeah. in software, RAID, snapshots, replication, the whole deal. Yeah, and, and I think um, one of the most important things is how we can scale out. Because even with you know the good flash technology that IBM is providing now, there's still not um, you know the, the, there's not the ability to scale out seamlessly, and that's one of the features that we add so nicely. So you can actually scale up to 65,000 storage devices, t you know volumes that are 18 million terabytes, and up to 2,048 nodes in a cluster. Um, our typical customer environments are not that big, yeah. uh, but that said, you can still scale out very, very easily. And how automated is it in terms of making changes, dealing with hot spots? Is the, does the system predominantly do that? Is it you know, so-called autonomic? Uh, well, is it really um, simple to move stuff around? Talk about that a little well, bit. Well, it, it is, um, first of all, it's very intuitive to use the software. We've spent 13 years on trying to develop something that's very easy to use. Mm -hmm. um, so the installation process is basically six next buttons and you're done. Um, there's no training courses that you need to go for multiple days to learn how to use the software. It's extremely intuitive. Um, but uh, then, you know, a lot of the processes can be automated. You create settings, and you were talking a little bit about the quality of service, and the quality of service uh, is something that you can tweak and make sure and guarantee that either an application file or a process is highly available. Um, so it is a very intuitive software, and it's really not an extra management layer. This is something that goes in as a piece of the infrastructure, and it's not, um, it doesn't require any extra overhead or anything like that. So we don't affect the performance, uh, which is obviously today one of the most important topics, right? We do not affect the performance negatively um, in flash environments. So you must have loved it last summer when, he, when, when VMware came out with the whole software-defined data center, and, and then, of course, uh, at, at EMC World, uh, you saw the announcement of Viper. Uh, we're here at Edge big theme on software defined storage. NetApp today announced cl uh, clustered on tap, data on tap 8.2. The press release, the whole bottom half of the press release was all about SDS. Yeah. You must have seen that and go, wow, this is great. This is what we do. Well, it, it, is, it is kind of funny how the market is coming to us, right? Because we've been at this for such a long time. And uh, now this is um, still today, you know, I like to compare it to, to fashion. Uh, 
it's not very fashionable to be ahead of your time and that's been the story of symbolic we've always been ahead of our time and it's not doesn't really pay off right um, now we're the technology and and we are sort of better aligned and we find and think that you know our time is yet to come and software defined is still a lot of talk we can actually do that today mm -hmm. and we are doing it today and and um, it's not I, I don't I don't think that um, it's going to be over very soon either this is just the beginning of it and the platform that we have developed is incredibly solid and good and stable and we have over 800 customers using it um, and now we're just expanding that to other storage media right. so Eva I, I, I have to agree your comment on you know software defined storage is a lot of talk because it's still relatively new especially for the big guys so can you unpack for us a little bit you know what, what have you seen in those customers you know what, what's the driver as to you know why, why they've moved to that what, what's been compelling uh, to, to have customers move to this kind of new paradigm well I think that um, we're seeing um, There's usually a very, there, the organizations are very siloed, right? So there will be people that are dealing with storage, people that are dealing with applications, people that are dealing with the networking. The best customers, uh, the ideal customer, I should say, are the ones that are actually talking to each other, where they actually sit around a round table every now and then and talk about, you know, what is the future? What is it that we need? Where is it that we can save money? How can we actually make, make get better utilization out of the hardware that we already have? And I think that that um, the application IT managers and the storage IT managers, as they are meeting, that's when software-defined storage and software-defined everything is going to become a lot more interesting. And um, so we're seeing that kind of, it's, it's a process uh, where Symbolic typically has gone into customers talking to them about an application, VDI, uh, SQL, file or web serving. Now all of a sudden we get an opportunity to talk to everybody and at all the different layers of the infrastructure and they understand the value of putting a software that improves availability and scalability of applications by tweaking down at the storage layer. Yep. So, are, are you are you finding yourself getting into the customer environment through that application owner or, or line of business, and and that's moving the storage guys, or are the storage guys part of the discussion at the beginning? No, the storage guys usually come in later. Uh, they have uh, their own hardware, uh, but they're also the ones that get beaten up by the application guys if the performance is not good enough, or if they don't have enough space for their applications, or whatever it might be. Um, but right now, like I said, the ideal customers are the ones that drag in the storage people already from the very beginning. So Eva, I, I, let me ask you, so you're now seeing all this, everybody come to Software Defined, they're trying to e extract their function out of their middleware, or controllers, or wherever it is. Um, it took you, you know, a decade plus to develop this, this software. How long do you think it's going to take the industry to, I mean, because they're using more modern you know, tools, you guys use them now as well, <clears throat> but you know, a decade ago it would, it would take longer to build that stack out, you didn't have as many resources as a large company, but as we all know, throwing programmers at the problem doesn't necessarily speed things up, in fact, oftentimes it can slow things down. So what, in, in your estimation, how much of a functional lead do you have? How long will it take you know, for example, you know, in EMC or in, in, in IBM, if in fact they wanted to, or in HP, to build out that type of, of, of storage stack, you know, for the software-defined world. Will it be a year, two years, five years? Well, there's, there's still so many layers and there's so many components of it, so I think that uh, we're going to see sort of a gradual increase, right? Not everything is going to happen at once. Mm -hmm. It's not like we're ever going to be done. Um, so there's going to be, you know, a, a little bit in six months, a little bit more in a year, a little bit more in two years. Um, but I don't think that there is a sort of universal solution that anybody's going to come up with because customers are always going to want more, 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 and all of us are just going to try to continue to, to respond to those requirements. So I don't, I, I can't, I can't say. So it's the depth and quality of what you're doing versus the tick-off item that, oh yeah, we have this well, snapshot we have, feature. Well, we have more of a, you know, Symbolic has more of a holistic view of the whole data center. Mm -hmm. What does it look like? What is it going to look like in two years from now, in five years from now? 
And we believe very much in the way that the public cloud providers have developed and designed their data centers. Scale out. Right. Yeah. With, you know, commodity hardware, intelligence in the software, they've had to design their own and write up their own software to accommodate the requirements that their customers need. And we believe that we can help to take mm -hmm. that concept to the enterprise. Mm -hmm. So you have a hyperscale mentality for your little slice of the world that you're bleeding into the enterprise. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. All right, everyone, well, listen, thanks very much for stopping by theCUBE. It was great to, it was uh, good to, to have you on. It was good to meet you again. Thank All right, you. keep it right there, everybody. Thanks, uh, thanks for, for watching this program. We have Jeff Jonas coming up, if in fact he's still awake. He just got in from Australia. He was doing an Ironman competition, but he's, uh, he's a, a fantastic uh, interview. So keep it right there. We're right back with Jeff Jonas right after this.